On today's episode, I'm going to show you how to take an image that looks like this and turn it into an image that looks like this in a few easy steps using the Tony Kuiper TK7 Go panel. Hello everyone, welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. It's the TK7 Go panel. I'm going to show you three basic little uh, things that we can do to this image to really make it uh, pop using the TK7 Go panel. Now, I just want to say up front, I am not affiliated with Tony Kuiper. I just love his panels and his actions. And I'm going to link you uh, to his website where you can see his panels only $29. You can even get his panel with a uh, video guide for $49. So it's not expensive, but it's worth every penny. In the description below this video, I'll leave a download link so you can download this image in case you want to try out Tony's panel. And also, again, uh, a link to uh, go to Tony's website if you want to pick up the panel. When you purchase Tony's panels, you get the uh, TK7 Rapid Mask panel, which I'm not showing today. Today, we're looking at this new panel, the TK7 Go panel. So that's what I want to really show you today. I've been using it a lot, and I really like it. There are so many things this panel can do for you, and I would overwhelm you if I showed you everything. It would take me hours to show you everything. But today, I just want to show you a few basic things you can do to make this image really pop. And it's very simple and easy to do. The first thing I want to do is darken the darker areas of these clouds just to make that sky pop a little bit. Now, if we come up here to the TK7 Go panel, you'll notice we have, number one, choose a source to view your mask options. Number two, you modify your mask. And number three, you output your mask. The TK7 Go panel was working with luminosity masks, layer masking. And I've used luminosity masks before in my videos if you watch them using... Uh, Topaz Studio 2 and like Luminar, but Tony Kuiper's masks are masks on steroids, his luminosity mask. In my opinion, he basically wrote the book on luminosity masking. Tony builds a really nice help system into his panels, and to access it, what you do is hold down your Option or Alt key, depending if you're on a Mac or, Mac or a PC, hold that down and hover over icons, and you'll see it's going to give you uh, information about what this particular icon when you click, it does for you. This one opens an interface to select predefined light starks and midtones masks based on pixel luminance. The next one deals with uh, zone masks, and that's the one we're going to use today, and I'll explain that in a second. And then we have another one here we're going to use today also, and this one creates infinity color masks, okay? And again, anytime you hover over any of these icons, you're going to get some really helpful information to help you out. And I really appreciate the fact that Tony built this into his panels and actions. So not only in the panels do you get all this helpful information, but when you go to his action panel, which is very valuable, you get help information when you hover over anything there. So you're going to really love and enjoy that. It's going to be a big help to you. We're going to start out with this icon right here, and let's look at the help on this. Create zone masks. The color picker opens first. Use it to select a tone from the image. Click OK, and then the zone mask interface opens to further refine the mask, so it tells you exactly what to do. Let's go ahead and do that, but before I do that, remember, I want to darken up the darker areas of these clouds, right? So let's click this icon right here, and this color picker comes up. And so what we want to do is choose an area we want to affect. Now, I want to affect these darker clouds. And so all I need to do is click right here. And then I'm simply going to say, OK. And just like that, I've created a luminosity mask. Now, remember your masking uh, principles, white reveals and black conceals. That's very important. I don't want to get too technical today, but these are your different zones. And if you remember Ansel Adams, he came up with the zone system. This is zone 1 being a very dark zone. This is zone 9 being a very light zone. And then you have all these different zones in between. And then you have the slider that you can slide between all the different zones. This is just zone number 1, zone number 2, but you can slide in between those zones with that slider. I hope that makes sense. And if I option or I'll click over this slider, it tells me use this slider to choose the tone that will appear brightest in the zone mask. Now, I don't have to adjust these things if I don't want to. Because when I pick that area right there, I, I actually got what I wanted. But if I need to alter it, I can change these things around. I can slide these sliders. This particular slider, it uh, uses a slider to adjust the brightness of the zone mask. So if I want my mask to be a little lighter to reveal more, I can move this to the right a little bit. 
and you see how it gets a little bit lighter okay so and i may just do that and this particular one here it deals this slider deals with the width of the selected zone like how wide to the left or right of that zone will, will get picked up it defaults at the widest but if i move it to the left i can narrow it and next up we have this modify section now this adjustment right here works as a levels adjustment so you can lighten or darken certain areas of the mask here the luminosity mask you can invert it with this icon right here you can paint on your mask with black paint or white paint you can do different things and at different times you're going to use different uh, methods in here but you don't have to use any of these methods if you don't need them and right now on this particular adjustment i don't need these adjustments here so i'm just going to bypass step number two and i'm going to go right to step number three which is my output how do i want to output my luminosity mask now when i output my luminosity mask generally i'm using curves levels or hue and saturation but you could do things like photo filters you can dodge and burn through luminosity mask but i want to use a curves adjustment just to add some pop to that sky all we need to do is click this uh, icon right here i'll hold the option key down so you can see creates a curves adjustment layer with the mask preview as the layer mask so let's go ahead and click it and there we go and now you'll notice we have a curves adjustment layer with that luminosity mask attached to it. Now, if you want to see what that luminosity mask looks like, you can hold down your option or alt key and click on that mask. And we can see the mask we generated, the luminosity mask. And I'll just option click that or alt click it and you'll see your image come back. And now we're ready for the fun. Now we need to uh, get our curves adjustment up. So we don't want to have the uh, mask selected. Click on the... Uh, icon here to bring your curves up now your screen may look different than mine depends how you have it set up this is just the way i have my photoshop set up but my curve sits right here so all i need to do is click a point on my curve click and drag down now the whole image the whole image will change but i'm just looking at the sky and i think that sky looks really good right there now i don't want that adjustment down here but i'm going to show you a really cool little trick and i'm going to use a uh, tony kuiper action to do that Let's shut this layer off, this curves one layer off, so we can see a before. There's a before and there's an after, okay? But again, I don't want that adjustment in the foreground here, but I want it up in the sky. So here's my little tip. I'm going to use this action, this guy right here. And if I hold my option key down and hover over this, you notice it says group. Put selected layers into a new group with a black hide all layer mask. Now I'm going to click this and notice what happens here. It puts this curves adjustment only in a group and puts a hide all layer mask on it. And you're going to see the power of this in one second. This technique I'm going to be showing you right now is a technique called masking the mask. Now I need to get a paintbrush. I'm just typing my B key for a paintbrush. Now I have a really soft brush here. You can see it, it's uh, hardness is at 0% and I'm going to make it fairly large. Now I want to paint with white paint. And I have my opacity and flow at 100%. I'm just going to simply, with white paint, let that adjustment be painted on to the sky. Just like this with this very soft brush. Now, when I get close to the horizon here, I'm just going to skim that horizon with that feather edge, like so. And voila, just like that, I've masked my mask. But look what I've done. I've only added that luminosity mask to the sky portion. So there's the before and there's the after. My foreground stays intact. So that's a really cool technique and remember that one. You'll be using it a lot. The next thing I want to do to make this image pop is to take some of these darker areas here and make them a little bit darker just to add a little bit of extra contrast to the foreground to really make it pop. Okay, so what I'm going to do is use that same zone mask and click right here and select a dark area like say right in here. Give that a click and click OK, and it's going to create my luminosity mask. All right. And then, of course, I can go in here and adjust it. Now, remember this slider here adjusts the brightness of the zone mask. So I can uh, lighten the lighter areas up by moving this to the right a little bit. OK. And I can narrow those areas by moving this to the left. So I just want to target those really dark areas. See how I'm narrowing that out? Maybe somewhere around in there. Now, if I need these light areas to go a little lighter, I can take in the modify section, take the right side of this levels adjustment, move it a little bit to the left and see those areas that get a little bit lighter and something like that looks good. Now, I'm not worrying about this sky here because I can do that mask and mask technique again. All right. 
And now to output it, I want to output it to a curves adjustment again. Because remember, like I said, I use that one a lot, especially for lightning and darkening things. Okay, so I'm going to click that and it's going to apply that uh, luminosity mask to a curves adjustment right here. Now let's make our adjustment. Now this histogram here in the levels represents the area that I selected that particular zone. So I'm going to click right here on the edge of this histogram. Click here and drag down. Now it's only going to be affecting those darker colors. You see that? Now I don't want to go too far and block them all up, turn them black. But I just want to come down just a little bit, just add that little bit of a contrast pop. Now here's the before and here's the after. Isn't that cool? But it's also affecting my sky up there a little bit. So I can use that mask a mask technique or masking the mask. Or I could uh, come right over to this layer mask right here. Let me option click this layer mask. And I could just get black paint and paint this out here. I don't usually like to do that, but you could. Any of these light areas in the sky, you could paint out with black paint. Let me option click this layer mask again to get my image back. Or I could use the mask a mask technique. Instead of using a black mask, let's use a white mask. This guy, if I hold the option or all key down, it tells me group puts selected layers into a new group with a white reveal all layer mask. So let's go ahead and do that. Click that and we have a white uh, reveal all layer mask. So nothing happens to my image. So now all I have to do is get a brush, get some black paint. Okay, so black paint, I have 100% here adjusted. And all I have to do is simply paint on the areas that got affected, like over here and here, just like that. And I'm just painting on the mask right there. So now let's see, here's my before and here's my after. It's only affecting that foreground. But look how wonderful a job that's doing. Now, if I felt I went too much, I can take this opacity and pull it the whole way off and then just build it up slowly and put the right amount in there, maybe around like 75%. So here's the before and here's the after. Same with this sky group right here. Click this on and off. If that's too strong, I could come to this group and maybe ease off in it a little bit as well. Maybe somewhere right around there, you know, around 86%. Here's the before and after, and if I option click the background layer, here's the before and here's the after. So already we've got some nice uh, pop to this image. Now I just want to affect some color next. I just want to affect these greens in the foreground, and I'll show you how I do that with a luminosity mask. This time, instead of the uh, zone mask, I'm going to use this infinity color mask, and it's really cool. So I'm going to click it, and when I do, I'm going to select a color that I want to affect. So I want to affect like these green tones in here and make them a little bit more saturated. So I'm going to click right here and click OK, and it creates a mask. Now I can alter that mask by making some adjustments here. Now these sliders here, I'll just hold the Option key down so you can see what they do. This slider sets the brightness of the Infinity Color Mask. So if I need, need a little stronger adjustment, I can take this and move it to the right and watch See how these areas lighten up here? I don't want to go too crazy, but I just want to lighten them up a little bit. And this other guy will affect, this slider sets the color feathering of the infinity color mask. So it'll feather that mask a little bit, give it softer transitions on the edges. Now, of course, I can use this modify. I can make these areas even lighter by moving this level slider to the uh, left, make them a little bit lighter. I can make the darker tones a little darker by moving this to the right. You see that? So I only want to affect selected areas. Now, it's not going to touch anything in the sky. It's only working with the foreground. Isn't that cool? But now for the output, what I want to do is choose this icon right here, which is, I'll pull my help screen up, creates a hue saturation adjustment layer. So let me click this. And here is my hue saturation adjustment layer. And again, if I option click this layer mask, you can see the mask I've created. Option click it again, we come back to the image. Right now, my uh, mask is selected, so I need to click this icon right here to get my hue saturation adjustment to come up. Now, watch how cool this is. And when I take the saturation adjustment, move it to the right, it's only going to affect those colors that I selected. Isn't that cool how it just targets just the exact colors there through that luminosity mask? So I can adjust that, and I can even come here and adjust the hue of it. You know, do I want to warm them up a little bit? Maybe just a slight amount like that. And I can even adjust their lightness, make them lighter or darker. But I think I'm just going to leave it right where it is there. But I can give it more or less. Okay. I think that looks really nice. Now, let's click this eye. Here's the before and here's the after. But you notice it's only affecting those greens. It's not affecting these tones back in here, but just these foreground tones, the ones that I selected.
And again, if I went too strong, I can either pull the saturation back here or I could take the opacity and just pull back on that a little bit. Maybe like 75%. Here's a before and here's an after. Now, let's look at the overall before and after. I'm going to option click this background layer. So here's the overall before and the after. But look at all that pop I was able to get in with three simple adjustments. Now, to be honest with you, the video took me a while to explain everything to you. But when I actually do this in real time, this honestly takes... I would roughly say anywhere between three to five minutes. It actually goes pretty quick. It takes me a while to explain it, but again, it's really fast and very effective. Well, there you go, everyone. We were able to take this image, start it out looking like this, and turn it into this, an image with a lot more pop all with the help of the Tony Kuiper TK7 Go panel. If you'd like to see more uh, videos on luminosity masking, please let me know in the comments section below. And also, I'd love to hear from you. Please leave me comments and questions. If you enjoyed my tutorial today, please give it a like, share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click the bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.